This is Stephanie, and this is the Mocha Minutes Podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I just wanted to let you know about something that's a little new here at the Mocha Menace Podcast. We are now participating in Buy Me a Coffee. So if you haven't heard, buymeacoffee.com is a place where you can show some um, support and some love monetarily to some of your favorite content creators. That includes me. (laughs) Um, So... It's in the increments of either a dollar, three dollars, or five dollars, and you can do as many as you would like. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know, would love, love, love some support. So if you would go to buymeacoffee.com backslash mocha minutes, I would greatly appreciate it. It will also be in the show notes. Okay, here we go. I don't want to talk. About the things we've gone through Though it's hurting me Now it's history I've played all my cards And that's what you've done to Nothing more to say No more ace to play The winner takes it all the loser standing small beside the victory. That's our destiny. Hello, welcome to the Mocha Men's Podcast. I am Stephanie. Thank you for joining me for some solo dolo mocha. Um, yeah, I thought I would just hop on the mic. It is, um, after I after my birthday, I'm a little bit refreshed. I took a little bit of time um, just to unplug and unwind. Uh, I didn't realize how, let's see, what's the word? Wired, frazzled, burnt out I was. Because it's kind of like you never know that you're like, I really need a vacation or some time off until you realize that Literally, people breathing wrong get on your nerves. Like, I was like, I was at work just frustrated. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, I swear I'm going to lose it. And I'm like, oh, yep. You need a vacation. And so I'm glad that I took five straight days to not do anything. But then it made me think. I shouldn't just take vacation around like special occasions or coupled with a um coupled with a holiday i need to start taking more time off just so i can unwind and unplug because i think for my mental health for the health of this podcast i need to start taking more time to just relax not do anything or go and do something like i tell everybody drink some water touch some grass take a nap you know it's like those kind of things so I was like, mm, I got to follow my own advice. Mm. Eat some craft ice. I did not mean for that to rhyme, by the way. Um, and just enjoy life a little bit more. Um, I'm coming solo dolo just so I can get some thoughts off my brain. And... Just talk a little bit. Sometimes I feel like I don't talk and then other times I do. So, first, huh. when I tell you the jolt I get from seeing all of these beautiful black people enjoying the Renaissance tour, I am just in awe. I was not able to make it when it was in D.C., Um, but to see basically people just having a good time going to a concert, enjoying, um, the extreme entertainer that is Beyonce, Giselle Knowles Carter does something to me. I love it. I love seeing all the fashions. I love people doing all the social media posts, the TikToks, the reels, um, everything. I'm just, 
it's so beautiful. It's kind of like me enjoying first day of school when I see people posting all of their kids, grandkids, um, teeth people who are teachers. I know quite a few teachers posting what their um, classrooms look like. I'm like, those kind of things just give me, just make me smile, makes my heart smile. So then a lot of people going back to school. I mean, it's that kind of thing. I just love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> I just love it. And I just love seeing everybody enjoying Club Renaissance. I love the Renaissance tour. I'm so glad that all of you are doing it. So thank you for sharing it with me. That's one of the good things about social media is that those kind of things we get to see. And it's like we can enjoy. You know, people I've never, I may never meet. And I get to tell them, like, because you do this, it just makes me smile. So very, 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 Ooh. Oh, sorry. So that's the other thing. I'm just very, Lord, I'm so, hmm, I swear, long days, honey, long days. So phew, let's get into some teens, get some, into some teens, some teens, some teens. Um, so I remembered so the thing about it is because uh, I do not like I don't have like um NFL red ticket um I'm sorry NFL red zone that's what it was it used to be included in my um cable package and then for some odd reason they just took it so having red zone helped me when I was playing because I'm a big I think I still I might still have time to actually sign up for a um fantasy football league because I love it It's not that late. I'm just, I feel like I'm like an old lady. I just feel old. Any other time I don't feel old. Um, so I wasn't, I'm sorry. Playing fantasy gets me into um, players of other teams. But one player that I kind of enjoy having during fantasy, because it's always tricky to pick up receivers for the Ravens. That's my home team. But it's also like our receiving core. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's better now that we got Odell. Um, But it was always like a hit or a miss. um, Because the receivers really did, they really are, I sound like cold sports when I talk about sports. Um, But I've noticed some of the better receivers is not just because they're really good receivers. That's part of the battle. Um, But the other part is having great chemistry with the quarterback. So... When we um, get great chemistry with anybody with um, Lamar, because Joe Flacco had it with the tight ends. Those, that was his bread and butter and or Anquan Bolden. Anquan could literally, every time, every time I was just like, how did he just catch that ball? How did he just do that? It was like every time I'm like, Psh. and then when Anquan was gone from the team the year after we won the Super Bowl and all looked like it would be incomplete passes. The whole time I was thinking, like, if Anquan was here, he'd have caught that ball. That's literally what I would think. Um, so while I was on vacation, um, unfortunately, Alex Collins passed away um, on August 14th, which is very sad because he's so young. He was, he was so young and it was just like, wow. It's like, oh my goodness. That, that is just, that's really sad. Um, he seemed very nice, very, very personable on the Ravens. Um, wasn't there that long. But yeah, love to his family. Also, uh, another person who passed away was Ron Cephas. You guys may know him as William on um, This Is Us. He passed away. He was only in his 60s. Um, but he had a very um, beautiful career. Um, I've seen some of the photos of his. Now, mind you, he played, it, he played William, but I know, if, like, like, you know, part of it probably was, um, part of it was probably the aesthetics, but just a, it was a beautiful, he was a, just, he radiated such good energy off the screen. And it's so beautiful to see the, um, the tributes from people across, um, across the acting sphere. And also just post social media because 
the thing about Liz, when I think about it, This Is Us, This Is Us is a show where some people could cry every single episode. Me, it would always be at least one episode every season, never failed, that it would just have me like in a, um, a box of emotion. William's death on This Is Us was that episode. And that is very much because of Ron Cephas. So it, Ron Cephas Jones, let me say his whole name. Um, so big loss, beautiful, beautiful person. The tributes were beautiful. Um, the Washington Post, yeah, they can go scratch. Because I'm sitting here like, y'all couldn't write something else. Y'all had to write that he was a drug addict. It was so weird. Because it was just like, that was just, it was just a gross headline. It's just like, what the heck? It was like, why would you say that? I'm like, I don't even know. Um, let's see. What else do I want to talk about? I mean, I have plenty of things I want to talk about. But I, I just kind of, I don't know what it is about him. I just kind of just liked him. I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, let's see. <sighs> Usually I don't sit here and uh, talk about, uh oh, wait, so I'm talking about death, let's talk about life. So shout out to the uh, Serena Williams and Alexis Ohanian. Um, Serena just had another baby girl. Um, her name is Adair River. I, I, I'm sorry, Adira River. It's a beautiful name, by the way. It was just like, oh my God. I think River is such a cute little girl's name. So, but it also is a cute boy's name. Um, so there's that. Um, so congratulations to her and also word on the curb is that Rihanna also gave birth, um, not too long ago and she actually gave birth to a little boy. So congrats to, uh, Mama Riri or Mama Savage or Mama Fenty, whatever you want to call her today. Um, so very excited about that and so glad, um, that we're doing that. So coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to give you a heads up. Um, so there have been a few interviews that, and this is back to social media that have been going around the place. So we have had, you know, the, the Rachel article, Rachel slash Raquel article with Bethany. Um, I will be, you know, full disclosure. I don't really, I don't listen to Bethany's podcast. I used to be a Bethany Frankel fan, loved her. And then the bloom came off the rose and the bloom came off the rose for me when she was still on the show with Carol Radwell. And that whole season, I was just kind of like, mm, I don't know. And I found myself in the minority of like, cause you know, this is a time where it's like, you had to have a team, like either team this or team that. So it was team Bethany versus team Carol. And they're like, whose side are you on? And I had remained team Carol. And I don't, and it's like, I can't, sometimes I can't even put my finger on why I was like that. It was just like, no, I don't know. Something about this don't rub right with me. And so back then I was just like, I don't know. And then things started happening. Right. And then now with this re, um, reality TV reckoning that comes on the heels of the um, SAG after strike that is still currently going on and the WGA strike that is still going on. You have Bethany coming out to be <clears throat> the whistleblower, the normal way, the normal ray of reality TV. And I'm like, girl, it is not you. But for some odd reason, she felt this was her thing to do. This is a crisis, according to her. She likes to say this is a crisis. So I guess it's like, I got to do it. I don't know why you feel like you have to do that, but there's neither in nor there. So she had an interview with Raquel or Rachel from... Vanderpump Rules, and it's kind of up in the air. She actually is coming back to the show? I, I don't know. I don't know if she's coming back. Um, part of me is just like, why would she come back? It's, that was That's the part of me that feels like, girl, why would she come back? Um, so it was in three parts. This is the confusing thing about me. Um, one part was like 40-something minutes. One part was 20-something minutes. Another part was 20-something minutes. And there is a significant percentage of those minutes that's full of ads i yeah we're I, i'm yeah i need i need some more 
um, lips and some more ears. So I'm going to have a couple people on to basically we're going to chop and screw this up because I got so many thoughts and Fifi's. Um, shout out to the Brav Bra Bros. Um, yeah, of it, but they were saying that's how I was feeling because on one hand, I hear people when they say Ra Rachel should be able to tell her side. They're right. She should. I just... I don't know if it should be Bethany because there's something very pretentious about the way that Bethany is handling this. Oh, I'm sorry. It was three parts and she also had a follow-up. I guess a response because... Sometimes it comes off like there are some people who love being, who are saying they don't love being in the spotlight, but they relish it. But then they almost certainly do not want somebody to basically not congratulate them or throw a ticker tape parade whenever they like sniff. And I think even though people listened as, as a podcaster, I will say this, um, I hate download is still a download, honey. So whether you like me or dislike me, you download my stuff, that's a download. There's some people who hate listening to that interview or only wanted to listen to the interview because they wanted to check out Rachel and they don't like Bethany. Or they really like Bethany and they hate Rachel. I mean, it's, it's it runs the gamut, right? So that's one interview that needs to be discussed and we're going to definitely, I got my eyes on some folks to discuss. The second interview is the two-part of Kenya Moore. And it just made me realize I didn't do a deep dive on the Nini interview. Now, Carlos' interview with Nini and Carlos' interview with Kenya, both really good to me. I thought they were really good um, interviews. I just really, really, really want to talk about it. I just really, really want to talk about it because there is something about Kenya Summer more I just adore, right? Love her love 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 Kenya Moore on the show and I agree that you know it's kind of like her energy is needed on the show but I'm kind of glad and again I'm going to find some good people to um discuss it um that she that one is being pointed out that that Kenya looks bored and Kenya kind of confirmed that she was bored and I'm this is some, some people who are like dynamic on reality. They need a foil and they need somebody, they need somebody to banter with. And Kenya had a point where she said she, like, honestly, if we're looking at like the cast, she really didn't have anybody to banter with. Like, really, I feel like she doesn't have the, um, she doesn't have the patience for Marlo. I feel like her and Sheree are unevenly matched because one Sheree would never and it'd be no point of like her and Candy it won't work either because it's like the, yeah she doesn't have a foil and Courtney girl okay um mm. yeah and also listen to Courtney's interview with David and Yanti. I, I girl I just need I'm like I'm sorry I gotta unpack this with some folks so we don't have to unpack it so be on the lookout for that so let's see that is Rachel, Kenya, Bethany, to a certain extent, Courtney, because Courtney is coming on Speak On It with Candy. So, yeah, it's going to be like a interview roundup because, my goodness, it's a lot that we can discuss. So there's that. So there's the things that's in the works because it's just like, girl, I just, I, I just, Girl, I, it, it was a lot. So, now another thing that was discussed and I had thoughts about it was the whole thing with Jamie Foxx, Jennifer Anderson, his thread post, I guess the thread slash Instagram post. So, Jamie Foxx put up a thread saying um, something that is very... It's very funny when I think about it, right? Um, hmm. Oh gosh, I gotta figure out what to do with this. Okay, I'm gonna close it. Okay, so here's Jamie Foxx, who has had somewhat of a undisclosed health scare 
that he hasn't really talked about. It was kind of like rumors and what she said. Um, it's kind of like you just don't know, but it's not. I don't even understand. I, I really just don't under. Sometimes it, it was very much like we had to. S- I kind of just wanted him to get better. I, like if he wants us to know, we'll just know, right? So, this was an actual Instagram post. I thought it was in Threads, but I think it may have been in both. I'm not sure. And I think his apology was all over. So on August fourth, who was this a while ago? He tweeted out, they killed this dude named Jesus. What do you think they'll do to you? Hashtag fake friends, hashtag fake love. Now, okay. <clears throat> now, it what he just said can be interpreted to be anti-Semitic because when it comes to the unaliving of the Savior or Jesus, for anybody who doesn't know that who it is, um, it was carried out by the Romans. However, comma, it was requested by Jewish leadership, right? So that's where Jewish people turned into the they killed Jesus because they're the ones who requested the unaliving. So it could be taken as anti-Semitic. It can be. Um, Jamie, to think about it is, I had seen the apology before anything else, but I did notice when I saw someone sharing it, the um, like, and I saw that it said Jennifer Aniston. And I was like, why do I have a feeling that she just hit like because Jamie's her friend? Because that's literally what I thought. I remember, um, I think it was Candace from uh, from Potomac. She had liked something that Felicia had said. And the thing about it is, it wasn't, she's like, I only liked it because I go to Howard and she goes to Howard. Oh, she graduated from Howard. Like, she's Howard University royalty. She really didn't agree with anything. She said, girl, I was just liking it because Felicia said it. And she's an, alumna, she's an alumnus of Howard and I am too. So, see how that works. Um, but it was called out for being um, anti-Semitic. And then you saw Jennifer's very interesting um, response. Because the thing about it is, if you don't think that people like reached out to Jennifer Anderson, I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. I'm pretty sure people did. So, she had said, this really makes me sick. I did not like this post on purpose or by accident. And more importantly, I want to be clear to my friends that anyone hurt by this showing up in their feeds, I do not support any form of any form of anti-Semitism. Now, let me tell you what's the problem with this. I didn't like this on purpose or by accident. So then why did you like it? See how that works? It wasn't like, she's like, oh, I didn't do it by mistake. And I, oh, I guess I can't understand that. So she didn't like it like, oh, like, oh, yes, I definitely agree with this statement. Or, whoops, I hit it by accident. She was just, I'm not exactly sure what she wanted us to do, but she was like, I don't support any form of anti-Semitism. Now, to call Jamie anti-Semitic would mean you would have to marry intent versus impact. Not saying that people who are anti-Semitic, they have the intentions of being that way. But the thing about it is, he promptly apologized and deleted it. Because here's the thing. He didn't know that could be seen as anti-Semitic. Which, honestly, is very possible because I think what it is is that everybody thinks that across all spectrums, we are notified about what is considered anti-Semitic, xenophobic, racist, homophobic, transphobic, when you actually see people who have missed steps. All of a sudden, it's like they just did not know. They're like, wait, I had no idea. Because the thing about it is, for many parts of the black community, if not all the black community, when they say they, they're not thinking of Jewish people in general because for a lot of black people, they may not look at it at the nuanced way of Jewish people called for the unaliving, but Roman people act, but the Romans actually carried it out. They may just be looking at the fact that the Romans are the ones who killed Jesus. And you know what I'm doing right there? I'm giving Jamie the benefit of the doubt because let's be very clear. 
he didn't know that and a lot of other black people did not. Are there black Jewish people who probably knew that? Absolutely. They probably knew that. They're like, uh, no, yeah, I've, I've kind of heard that. Because the first time I saw it, I was like, now how could that be? Wait a minute. Oh, because they could be interpreted as people talking about Jewish people. Here's the thing. He had no idea, and that's why he apologized. But for some reason, when it comes to um, black people who make these missteps about any kind of phobia or ism, we it's like it's a harsher punishment because in some weird way, people think that black people should just know better than anybody else. Even though when black people actually try to educate people on what is um, racist, xenophobic, transphobic, anti like if we try to like educate people, they say we're, you're, we're playing a card and we don't know what we're talking about. But then if we make missteps, it's like, how could you not? I'm like, what do you mean? Y'all don't know that. Because there are some people who did not. So we could like, could I add the umbrella of he is black and that's not what we mean in the black community? Of course, because it's true. Because it's not, there's a lot of people who, like for them, it, it didn't even dawn on them. It was like, oh, the they is, ju oh, okay. Because the thing about it is, it's like there's a lot of things that we don't realize that's internalized within our cultures. Uh, each culture and then cultures um, basically coming up at intersections all over this world where, yeah, it means something different in our culture than yours. Here's the however. Not being aware of something being offensive doesn't make it less offensive. Hence, why Jamie just apologized because he didn't know. Saying, well, Mike, that's not how you meant it, so y'all shouldn't be offended, is literally not going to fly. Considering that it is a white person who used something that is low-key racist against black people, but may not be widely known. You wouldn't accept that from them. It's like, well, I mean, that's not how I meant it, so you shouldn't be upset. If you won't take it for some um, ignorant and obtuse white person saying something racist against black people, then don't try to add that cover of, it just means something different. It does. But just because it is not the intention or you're not aware of the offense doesn't stop it from being offensive. So I kind of, so honestly, I applaud Jamie for just apologizing because one, if you don't know, you don't know. And so people were using other examples, but the example I had was the one with Carrie Washington. So a few years ago when she was still on Scandal, still tweeting stuff, like she, like when it came to Scandal, the cast, they were heavy in um, live tweeting, loved it. And I can't remember what the context of the tweet was, but she said, somebody was her spirit animal some a indigenous person literally tweeted at her and said oh carrie please don't say this because this is extremely offensive do you know what carrie did she said oh um oh my gosh thank you so much for telling me because i did not know i am so sorry see and the thing about it is even with that going and it wasn't just when this thing went viral and it got like thing pieces and people talking about it. Here's the thing. Even after that, there are still people who do it. Still, to this day, they will still use the phrase spirit animal. And I think people were trying to like, and I'm one of those people, trying to switch it to people saying Patronus. And they're like, isn't that offensive? They're like, well, that's offensive. To who? Harry Potter? Patronus, like, like a Patronus. And for anybody who doesn't know Harry Potter, um, it's a spell called Expecto Patronum. And then you conjure up a charm basically to um basically i guess to combat whatever is against you and the form of it is something within your subconscious um so basically that's your patronus so it's kind of like patronus could be for people who are like well what can i say then it's like because there are people like so what else should i say if someone's telling you something is offensive why are you trying to tell them that they well it's like i get it's like it's offensive to you but everybody uses it no that's not really what it is so the thing about it is is that the thing about like i say all of that and i think about when it comes to quote unquote cancel culture to be fair Nobody ever truly 
truly gets canceled. Truly. And also, the term of being canceled, that came from a whole different culture. Came a whole different community. And we just repurposed their word because that's not what people... Like, essentially, that wasn't the original context, from what I understand. Because, one, canceling somebody is very um, subjective. It is not a collective thing. And then it turned into, I just can't say anything because you're just, like, I'll just get canceled. I'm like, hey, hi. There was a time in our history that people literally wanted to just call black people a racial slur and then was trying to figure out why they had to stop. I just can't call y'all niggers anymore. Why not? Oh, what word do I have to say now? There are literally white people to this day that have literally expressed how it's annoying that they can't just call black people whatever they want to call them. I got oh, I got to be politically correct. I'm like, so if you want people to respect you and not call you a slur, not call you a darky, not call you a tar baby, not call you the N word, not call you um, colored. Y'all, you have to be able to pay it forward, honestly. So the thing about it with Jamie, it was like, I thought it was literally, I think he did what he wanted to do. Jen, look here, Jennifer, I'm still trying to be on your side because of the whole Brad Pitt thing. But you know what, girl? I was like, "Mm." look here, I'm going to say this. She ain't on my list. The list I'm talking about are the list of those white women where it's like, man, y'all ain't going to say too much about her now. And I ain't going, I ain't going to take it. She's not on that list. So she is not, you know, I'm sorry. Let her have it. Cause girl, shut up. Um, we're not talking about you. Cause it's like, people are so scared. I'm like, girl, you're Jennifer Anson. You're not getting canceled. Like, please spare me. Okay. So another thing that, uh, I won't say tick, tick of my fancy is not what I wanted to say, but just something that, you know, Saw going around and around and around and around and around and around. (sighs) Michael Orr and his uh, lawsuit against the Tuleys. So if you don't know who Michael Orr is, Michael Orr is a former Baltimore Raven. He got drafted by the Ravens. Um, But his uh, early life was a subject of a movie called The Blind Side. (sighs) <sighs> so, in the movie, um, Michael Orr really came up about, you know, it's kind of like he had a very hard life growing up in the Tuohys, which was a very prominent white family that had um, very big ties to Ole Miss. Like, we took him in, according to the uh, movie, they, <laughs> Le- the Tuohys, most notably Leanne, had to teach him about the rules of football um, they had two other children, you know, it was like, there's like, they came here, um, and they came here to like, they had to come, you know, it was just very much like the, um, the white savior narrative that has gone on to a lot of movies. Now I will say this, the movie is based on a book called The Blind Side. The Blind Side is being told from the two E's side, kind of like the green book. Um, the Green Book is from the, um, and I've never seen the movie The Green Book, girl. The Green Book, that's also from the um, the perspective of the white person that's involved in that story. Also, The Help as well. None of these movies or stories or books are coming from um, the side of the um, non-white person. So that's why it seems like, why does this seem like a white saving movie? I'm like, because it's based on a book by a white person who's you know, fix they, fixing themselves to be <clears throat> a savior of some black or non-white person. <sighs> okay. Um, so, now come to find out, mind you, Michael Orr played on the Ravens. He was not, not a bad old lineman. He wasn't. Um, then it came up that he was suing um, the two E's because in the movie, it seemed like that they, um, were going to adopt them or did adopt them. I, I haven't seen the movie in a while. And now you come to find out that, um, he was never adopted and they just placed, placed him into a conservatorship. 
So one thing about like the production and the promotion, I'm not, not production, promotion of the movie The Blind Side, you saw a lot of the twoies, but not really Michael Orr, because I remember distinctly him having the issue of why is the movie making it seem like they had to tell me what football was or how to play? I knew the rules. I'm like, oh boy. So the thing about it is the movie garnered um, Sandra Bullock an Oscar. Sandra Bullock is on my list of white women. Uh, okay. Um, <sighs> so then it's like he's finding out now that he's 37 and out of the league that one, he didn't really make any money from the selling of the book or the movie, The Blind Side. The two he's did, including the two children, but not him. Because even when you saw the production, you didn't really see Michael Lore on the red carpet, I think you probably did, but not as heavy as for the twoies. Um, so now it's kind of like, they're like, well, what the heck is going on with Michael Orr? Because now he's suing them. And it was kind of like you go, okay. So he is going, he's right now going, he's on a book tour. Um... And so let's get into this. So, because right now he's going on a book tour. So let's get into a little bit of this. Michael Orr emerged to cheers from the dozens of people lined up to get his newest book and addressed the crowd briefly before taking his seat. Beyond that, he didn't have much to say. The former NFL player whose life story became the inspiration for the Oscar-nominated movie The Blind Side greeted fans, signed his recent release memoir, and took pictures at a book event Monday evening but maintained his media silence a week since suing to end his conservatorship. He, de- he declined to speak to reporters, only making a 90-second introduction to the assembled crowd in line at 6 p.m. A bookstore employee advised reporters in attendance of that before or emerged on the patio from inside. Or who played the first five pro seasons with the Baltimore Ravens, spoke carefully to fans, telling him he couldn't say much given the lawsuit and with reporters present. present. This book, it means a lot to me, or said during brief remarks at the start of the event at the Ivy Bookshop. Basically, it's a playbook on life and how I continue to fight back and when your back's against the wall. That's how I felt all my life. Ora filed a petition August 14th in a Tennessee probate court accusing Sean and Leanne Tui of lying to him by having him sign papers making them his conservators rather than his adopted parents nearly two decades ago. Ora is asking for the conservatorship to be terminated, a full accounting of the money earned off his name and story to be done and to be paid what he is due with interest. He accused the Tuies of falsely representing themselves as his adoptive parents, saying he discovered in February the conservatorship agreed to in 2008 was not the arrangement he thought it was and that it provided him no familial relationship to them. Or, who has never been a fan of the movie about his life, right, asked in the petition that the Tuies be sanctioned and required to pay both compensatory and punitive damages determined by the court. The Tuies last week called the claims they enriched themselves at his expense out at his expense, outlandish, hurtful, and absurd, and a part of a shakedown by Orr. A shakedown. Lord have mercy. Lawyers representing the couple also said the Tuies would enter into consent order to end the conservatorship they say Orr was aware of long before this year. Orr, stop. Of Orr played eight NFL seasons after being the 23rd pick in the 2009 draft out of Mississippi. The offensive lineman, yeah, I thought he was an offensive lineman. Started 110 games and won the Super Bowl with the Ravens. He sure did. Also playing for Tennessee and Carolina. He last played in 2016 and was released by the Panthers in 2017. The book he was promoting Monday is called When Your Back When Your Back's Against the Wall. Fame, football, and lessons learned through a lifetime of adversity. It came out earlier this month. The most important lesson in the playbook right here is looking looking yourself in the mirror. If you're going through anything, I don't care what it is, you have every answer that you need to get over what's going on. Or told the crowd. I just want to thank you all for coming and really, I really appreciate it. He ended those comments and go Ravens. Hey, Uh, he got a ring with the Ravens, okay? Or is the latest prominent figure to question a conservatorship nearly two years since supporters cheered Britney Spears being freed from her arrangement. The ruling came after Spears publicly demanded the end of the conservatorship, which had prevented her from making her own medical, financial, and personal decisions since 2008. So I find it really interesting that people were very, because, and I was one of those people who were like, uh, conservatorships are no joke. And literally, she could not even, 
she could not do anything. So people who um, thought that it was so weird and was ready to poke holes um, in him wanting to be released and said, how dare he, um, how could he like turn his back against them? That, that, that. Um, I find it interesting that you're just kind of like, I think the temperature that I'm seeing, uh, temperature of the water that I'm dipping my finger into is that people are labeling him ungrateful. They saved you. They did all of this for you. They were a prominent white family, very affluent in this, in, in, in Tennessee. The thing about it is they rose to prominence because of Michael Orr, because of the story. Because of the movie, The Blind Side. So you did make money off of it because even the, the son and the daughter, they also made money off this. So a lot of people who are following Michael Orr noticed that you don't really see him, see a lot of stuff with him in the two He's married, he's a husband, he's a father. So it's kind of like, it's not unheard of. And conservatorships are very, very rigid. I don't know what his is in, um, entails. And the thing about it, I think there's a quote out there showing that he did know he was on a conservatorship. I have feelings because he didn't understand what, it, what that actually meant. Because maybe he thought it was a form of adoption. It's not, by the way. Um, and I, I'm not exactly sure. But I'm not... Because I think what it is, is that... He may have like, oh, a conservatorship. I'm like, maybe that's the word they had to use. But the thing about it is, the way that the story was told, it did come off like the Tuies were his adoptive parents. And they came, well, saved him. And that's because that's, that's from their perspective. And it's like, girl, if y'all leave me the hell alone. Um, so there's that. I'm not sure. Like right now he's on tour. He has a memoir. The fact that he is just coming out with the memory is very interesting, but I think the reason why he wasn't more vocal about the movie at the time of the movie is because if he's not buying into the movie, why shouldn't anybody else come and see it, right? I just, it kind of makes you sad, but the thing about it is, I don't know. It's just sad. It, it just really is sad. Um, and hopefully they can rectify it because um, the the fact that the Tuies are calling this a shakedown. Shakedown of what? What are they shaking down? And then to act like you did not make money off Michael Orr in this story is actually kind of laughable to me. Because then there's, there's like y'all are trying to color him ungrateful too. Girl. Okay. Um, Another story before I get to the main event. Uh is this story coming out about Jimmy Grant. I am not Cole Sports, okay? But I also like to talk about sports. Um, but yeah, Jimmy Graham is coming back to the team this week after um, he had a medical episode where he was actually arrested. So Jimmy Graham, they, they reported that Jimmy Graham was arrested after a medical episode and I'm like why would a medical episode be like when they said arrested I'm like episode but it's a medical episode so this is coming out of Louisiana because he's with still of New Orleans New Orleans Saints tight end Jimmy Graham which by the way he used to be one of my favorite um tight ends early on when I started playing fantasy is expected to return this week to practice following what teams of what team officials have described as a medical episode that led police in the Los Angeles area to arrest the veteran player and take him to a hospital last weekend. I expect to see Jimmy out here hopefully tomorrow. Saints coach Dennis Allen. Wow, Dennis Allen said following practice Tuesday night. We'll see, but I don't think this is going to be anything that's going to cause him to miss a significant amount of time. Dr. John, Dr. John Amos or Amos, the Saints team physician has said J Graham likely had a seizure and was disoriented when he was picked up by authorities in Orange County on Friday night. The Saints had flown to California last Wednesday for joint practices with the, with the LA Chargers <clears throat> Excuse me. in advance of the New Orleans 22-17 victory in both teams' second preseason game on Sunday night. Graham did not play in the game. The team had Monday off and Graham also missed practice on Tuesday. Allen declined to go into further detail about what has ailed Graham in recent days. I'm not going to get into any specifics. 
I think the important thing is Jimmy's going to be okay, and hopefully he'll be back out here practicing quickly. Graham, 36, is a five-time Pro Bowl player who spent last season out of football. He returned to the NFL last month when he signed a one-year contract with New Orleans. He spent his first size five seasons with the Saints before stops in Seattle, Green Bay, and Chicago. The Saints close out their preseason slate at home game with the against the Houston Texans on Sunday. So the thing about it is, is like when I first saw the story and they said they arrested him, I'm like, why would you arrest him? Um, besides the fact that he's a big old, um, Jimmy Graham is a tight end in football. He's big. But also, if this man was having a seizure, why wasn't he take like they arrested him and took him to a hospital but you add arrest so hopefully this arrest is expunged but it kind of just um took me out when i saw this i was like hey, what do you mean you they arrested him it's like child okay um i just mm. I, I don't even know but hopefully he is going to get better i'm not sure if he has had a history with um History with seizures, but I think it's very interesting if he, that he had a seizure and was arrested. It's like, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't, something about that is just throwing me off, honestly. Um, but yeah, oh, it's been a little while, but the main reason I wanted to get on the mic and talk is because the Fresh and Fit YouTube podcast, I don't know if they have a, okay, so it may just be me. Um, but, hmm, they are a very, I'm sorry, people who do YouTube shows, I'm like, I, for me, a podcast is just an audio. So when people say, um, I see YouTube is a podcast, I'm like, it's not a video. I don't know. I, I, I need to stop thinking like an old fogey, honestly, but fresh and fit the pet, the, um, podcast, I'm putting in quotes cause I'm being shady was demonetized by YouTube. Um, on August 19th, they were doing a live stream. Myron Gaines, um, the, um, who is the most vocal, and then Walter Weeks, um, they were like, it's sucky news, sucky news, and they were just like shocked. Um, they said, is, is this the end, bro? Because we got some bad news, man. So then... Um, Myron Gaines, who a lot of the clips that y'all see that be angering the uh, timeline, it's usually from him, um, told everybody that they were kicked off the YouTube partner program, which is a type of membership that allows authors to monetize their audience and get access to exclusive features. Like you see people who watch YouTube and do super chats and all of that. Um, that's, that's part of the program. Um, so according to him, so basically we're going to figure out what's going on because we really don't know all the details. We're working with YouTube to try to come to a middle ground and, you know, work together and figure this out. Then, um, he also said, you know, they're like, it's very much what was me. Myron actually walked off crying and there wasn't all that much, um, sympathy and empathy for them. And usually I could find the sympathy and empathy. But I think the sympathy and empathy is like, I don't want to see anybody demonetize. I don't want people losing out on money. <sighs> Still though, you don't get to say the very disgusting incendiary things you say and think that you're going to get some sort of grace or people going, oh, that's terrible. It's like, you don't need to be on this platform. You have been monetized for quite some time saying some of the grossest things about not only women, but most notably black women, you have actually tried to get other platforms allegedly demonetized because some of them are coming out now saying, you want us to feel bad for you when you try to do this to me? Um, we have tons of videos where Myron of most notably um, has said some of the most grossest things about women. They talk down to women. He, Myra mentioned that, you know, I stopped this, I stopped saving children to do this. And it was like, well, I don't want him harming no children either. I mean, what children were you saving, sir? Then it's like, what, what is happening here? What, what, sir, what are you talking about? Saving children, sir. If you don't stop, here's the other thing. If you're like, I, we want to keep doing this. We want to keep doing this. It's like, 
you didn't get kicked off of YouTube. You just are not going to make money from YouTube. You technically could literally still be doing this, but you're like, oh no, it's like we've been demonetized. Look at how you treat people. The thing about it is, it's like these two single men, wait, Myron, I believe is not married. I can only say allegedly about the co-hosts. Neither one of them are married or and or in a um, long-term serious relationship, but they sure do have a lot of thoughts and fees about relationships. I'm someone who's also single. I'm not going to sit up here and tell people how they should um, court women. I can tell you what things are attractive to a woman, but yeah, the thing that they would like, quote unquote, advice they would give to men on how to treat women is hilarious to me. Because one, they, it was very much the he-man woman haters club of YouTube. And now that y'all not making money, you're crying. When you do clownery, the clown bites back. And finally, the clown bit back. People are not sitting here being like, oh my God, what was you? And I can't believe they did this to y'all. And it's like, why? Y'all seemingly were very anti-black and y'all give a damn about black people. So why, do, I'm, I'm sorry, we're not going to be like, you know, hitching up our wagons, getting our torches and pitchforks to come after you. I'm like, mm, no, pity. So anyway, um, what do you want in your pizza? See how that works? We don't care. We don't care, girl. We don't care. We don't care. I'm glad, we're glad you're gone. But also, if you think this is good work, do it for free. Just, just do it, keep doing it. We're demonetized, but guess what? Um, so, this question, can't you also just, oh, I don't know, advertise your cash app? You can still get money from there because there's a lot of people who are monetized on YouTube, but also advertise the cash app. Or have different links, affiliate links. In the in the com in the bios, I'm sorry, in the the captions of the videos, people who are monetized. Yeah, you want us to have a pity party where you want a he they wanted grace extended to them when you never extended to the woman that you the women plural that you have disrespected on this show the men who called y'all out for your ridiculousness you didn't have any sympathy and empathy for them you can't ask for something that you don't ever give and i'm sorry actually i'm not sorry i'm not sorry at all uh the only thing i can think about that is hey alexa play cool in the brain celebrate because people are celebrating. Because women who have spoke out, men who have spoke out, activists who have spoke out about that show, have said that the thing about it is like they are not going to stop because they're still getting money being terrible to people. The minute that they can stop making money, they're going to like stop doing this. And then you saw this grown ass man crack his little veneer of being a tough ass man who I say what I want it's just my opinion and that, that, that and I can say what you want fuck you women and y'all better bow down to me sir please you look a, you look a good 6.75 inches and I'm being generous because I'm thinking about you growing to that size sir please I'm sorry this is, should be a message to a lot of people when it comes to having a niche, something that's so uh, provocative. Let me just say this. It'll get you there, but it will not keep you there unless you're ready to grow and mature. It's not going to keep you there. Gone are the days of the Wendy Williamses and the Howard Stearns. Howard is still here, but the con his content has somewhat changed. It's not, it's, not, it's not the same. Some things have gone. Something has changed. Some things have grown. Again, being provocative can get you there, but it may not keep you there because the more eyes that see you, 
they might be like, oh, F them. So no, we don't feel bad. They basically got a lot of, well, he ain't getting any debtor. See how they work? Nobody cares. So let's see. Your tears do not move me because it didn't move when you treated women that way. Like the thing about it is like I have seen the clips and I saw the women and how disrespected and how you actually, how actually y'all joked about it. Call black women Shaniquas. Like, oh, okay. Well, these Shaniquas are not helping you. Shaniquas don't care. You, y'all got your asses handed to y'all by a couple of um, rap girls. And sex workers. And activists. And other content creators. You know, the ones you allegedly went after. Don't feel bad for you. But y'all, just wanted to hop on the mic. Just had some thoughts and some fee-fees. Episodes are coming soon. We're going to dissect some interviews. Also, Kanye v. Kim, the document in HBO Max. I am still on the fence of the Amber vs. Johnny documentary because, quite frankly, when it came to that, I didn't, I, I couldn't do this because, quite frankly, I could have swore there were allegations that um, Mr. Depp can be a little bit, um, uh, have you said, uh, two people could have swore there was like a rumor about the, about him and maybe Winona Ryder, but I could be wrong. So that's why I was like, allegedly it could be untrue. So when it came to those two, it was just seems like, because let's be clear. When it came to the case, Johnny Depp did not win. Their cases canceled each other out. He just asked for more money. He didn't win. Their cases canceled each other out. Because the thing about it is, it's like, the case wasn't even about if he was abusive. It was, how dare you, like, slant, or basically, how dare you slander my name. I'm sorry, oh, def- I'm sorry, defamation. Because it was written. What she said was written. He didn't sue the Washington Post, he sued her. So why didn't you sue the post? It's their story. Why are they not including this? No, you just sued her. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm still wrapping my brain about it. But y'all, thank you for listening. I do appreciate it. If you will be so inclined, if you want to buy me, buy the Mocha Minutes a coffee, www.buymeacoffee.com backslash Mocha Minutes. Hit the cash app, Mocha Sunshine 99 definitely would not turn it down and would appreciate it sharing the episode leaving five stars any support you can give i truly truly appreciate it and guys this has been the mocha men's podcast i will be back (gasps) 